Let's give some takeaways from last night's Spurs loss to Minnesota. What are some top NBA draft prospects the Spurs can focus on? And should the Spurs trade down? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from Cybertron Spring. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff, Jeff Garcia. Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs, the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs beat writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Hope everybody's having a great day. Or if you're uh, not, well, hopefully we'll make you feel a little better right here on Locked On Spurs. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get themselves 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. You want to go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On right now to get started. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen. Subscribe on YouTube, Locked On Spurs YouTube page, Ken's 5 Plus app, Spotify, iTunes, the list goes on and on. So... What are we talking about today? We're going to quickly recap last night's game. We're just give some quick takeaways from what happened. Then we're going to bring in our guest, Jack Thompson, formerly with ESPN San Antonio. Really good guy, good source to go to for all things NBA draft prospects, college prospects. We're going to be discussing the upcoming NBA uh, draft. Where exactly or, well, who exactly should the Spurs be targeting? And then we're going to ask Jack, should the Spurs trade down with their top pick this upcoming summer? But first... Yeah, your Spurs, they lost. Shocker, right? Lost to Minnesota. 114-105 in Minnesota. They wrap up the Rudy Road Trip 1-8. That one loss versus the, uh, I'm sorry, that one win was versus the Raptors. Woo, Wimby. Wimby watch. 17 points, 13 rebounds. Malachi had 12 points. Zach Collins had 5 points off the bench. Devin Vassell recorded 21 points off the uh, bench in the loss. And then Trey Jones added 11 points and 6 assists. Spurs are 11 and 48. Now, next face the OKC Thunder back home in San Antonio at the Frost Center this Thursday night. All right, so what happened? So, first, we got to talk about turnovers. Whew. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. That's That's got to be the biggest takeaway. 23 turnovers. Yes, you heard that right. 23 turnovers for your silver and black led to 30 points. Uh, for Minnesota. Matter of fact, that was the first thing Popovich talked about in his post-game chat. Said, yeah, you turn over the ball that much, you give up that many points off turnovers, you're going to lose. Everything else is irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, Wimby Ama spoke about it afterwards as well, saying that that is something this team needs to correct, and it starts individually, that they hope they get it done quick. You, you know, those, those mistakes, the sloppy play, not focused. Uh, team, hey, look, they used the word immature before. I'm pretty sure Popovich probably, probably, I don't know, probably said that that was kind of sloppy play, immature play that this team could not afford. I mean, yeah, I mean, that was pretty much the game right there. That was has to be the number one takeaway, just costly turnovers from start to finish. Now, takeaway number two, they woke up in the fourth period. They only uh, scored, uh, well, only turned over the ball five times, so yay. And the, the Spurs actually we got it right here. Yeah, five turnovers in the fourth period. They shot the ball 56%. You do that, you get yourself back into the game. So kudos to the Spurs for doing that. They chopped down that 20 point, 20 plus point lead that Minnesota had down to six. It was just too little, too late. They had that lead where well, they cut the lead down to 30 to six points with about 33 seconds left in the game. Again, just too little, too late. But Credit the Spurs. They came back. You know, maybe Minnesota took their foot off the gas pedal. But, hey, at least they fought back. At least that's something. Look, I'm finding the silver lining here, right? That's probably the biggest silver lining here for your Spurs. And the final takeaway has got to be Jeremy Sohan. Um, another bad game. 0 for 2 from the field. Uh, zero points. Uh, didn't really do much. Had one assist in about 15 minutes of play now. Sohan and Wimby did get benched to start the second half in that third period. Uh, Wimby did recognize it, saying that, yes, it was a message to them to, um, you know, shape up and, um, you know, play well and learn. But, yeah, Sohan, another game where he looked off. So hopefully it's just a little rut. You know, it could be the fact that the Spurs are just road weary. Sohan is road weary. Uh, they've been away from San Antonio for quite some time, nearly a month. 
And uh, it probably caught up to them. You know, they probably why they turned the ball over so much, why someone had a bad game, why the Spurs come out with some energy to start the game we saw against Minnesota, but then just flatline for the rest of the game for the most part until the fourth. But keep an eye on Sohan, uh, see if he can rebound. Hopefully against OKC, he'll do that. Perhaps coming back to his creature comforts, I mean, it was for him and the rest of the team. Will shake whatever there's uh, what's ever bothering him, uh, get out of this rut. Yeah, so uh, the Spurs need him. They need him um, to be playing at top level if they want to stay competitive in games, or at least eke out some wins. Not that many games left in the season. You know, they could be flirting, or they are flirting with having the worst record in franchise history. So they got to at least get nine more wins to tie it at minimum. So that doesn't happen. But, yeah, takeaway number three is, again, Sohan was absent. Hopefully, whatever is bothering him, he'll shake out ahead of the OKC game. Coming up next, we have Jack Thompson, of uh, full, well, formerly of ESPN San Antonio. We're going to be discussing NBA draft, NBA draft prospects, whether or not the Spurs should trade down, and much more. Coming up next on Locked On Spurs. This show episode is brought to you by and sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, if you're trying to look for online therapy, look no further than BetterHelp. Look, we all need some things to get off our chest every once in a while, you know, get, let things out. Fortunately for you, there's BetterHelp. You get an unbiased ear. That'll listen to you, what's ever bothering you, or perhaps you're doing things good. You just want to figure out how to keep in doing better. That's where better help comes in. Look, I know the Spurs are not having the greatest of seasons right now, and perhaps it's bumming you out. And but you know, sometimes there's things beyond sports, uh, things that are really impactful in your personal life. That's where better help comes in. But therapy can be for everyone. You know, if you have big problems, small problems, other than your favorite sports teams' issues, it's important to get things off your chest. Every once in a while. So if you're thinking about start, starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA right now. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. Hey, I want to talk to you about Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get when an outfit makes you look really good? Well, that's what you will get with Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix... You get a stylist who understands your size, your budget, uh, everything you need, your style too. And they do all the shopping for you. It's the easiest way to update your wardrobe this season. Easily upgrade your wardrobe, well, pretty much every day, all this year, with the professional help from a stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that'll work for you. You just give them your shirt size, uh, again, your budget preferences. Look, you get those boxes ordered. And guess what? No subscription needed. And then they'll send you the pieces just for you with outfit recommendations, pro styling advice, stuff that'll keep you looking good. And if you don't like the rest, you can just send the rest back. So, so simple. Stitch Fix makes everything easy. They do all the shopping, so you don't have to. They get, they save you time. They save you effort. And you get outfits that actually look really good on you. Look, if you don't love something in the package that you get, you just send it back. Shipping and returns exchanges are always free. Styles that make you look good, make you feel good, get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. All right, and we're back right here on Locked On Spurs. Uh, Rejoin for long. It's been a while. But I'm glad he's back. Mr. Jack Thompson, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. Make sure to follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Rocking the vintage 07 NBA champ t-shirt, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hear about these people that go out looking for vintage stuff like this and like they'll flip it for like like crazy amount of money? No, I'm not flipping it. To mean too not much gonna flip to me. It. Nah. Get that cash, Jack. <laughs> If I had if I had doubles, I would. But I like this shirt too much. <laughs> all right. For those of you who do not know, Jack is the guy we go to right here on Locked On Spurs for all things college draft prospects, the draft itself, et cetera. He is a man with the knowledge when it comes to prospects. So we're going to be talking about that. Who are the top draft prospects on his big board for the Spurs uh, this upcoming NBA draft? And if he could pick one, one player in this draft, that would pair the best with the Wemby. 
who would that be? And then we're going to ask him kind of a bigger question later on. Should the Spurs trade down? Like this past week, we discussed trading out. By the way, Jack, I'm an advocate of trading out completely. But we're going to see if wow. he thinks about trading down. So we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But March Madness is slowly here, Jack. A lot of Spurs fans are going to be tuning in to see who would be or can be wearing the silver and black jersey. When you're looking at this draft overall, they say it's weak. Is it really weak? Is it spot on or is it being kind of underrated? Um, I would say it's weak in the sense that no one you really see on the big board, you're like, wow, that guy, that's a future all NBA mm-hmm. type player. That's gonna that's a perennial all-star for the back end of his career once he gets into yeah. his prime. There's not really anyone out there that you can really say with like extreme certainty that that's the trajectory of their career. Mm -hmm. But while it's weak in that sense, it's strong in the sense that, you know, there's always teams looking for that number two or that number three that they want to add to their team to really, you know, fill out the Mm -hmm. roster and make it a championship roster and there is plenty plenty of those guys in this draft and if you're looking for a guard this is pretty strong class for guards really Uh, who are the best guards you see out there oh the best guard by far is uh the serbian nikola topic yeah he is phenomenal player looks a lot like a young luca young josh giddy those kind of guys that came to the league been playing pro for years extreme extreme basketball iq especially out of the pick and roll he's a six six big lefty guard that his game is absolutely going to translate well to the nba especially Mm -hmm. if he can get his shot uh more consistent but guards after him i would say my favorite are probably stephen castle he's a point guard freshman out of uconn He's the back end of his season. He's he's really been exploding, and there probably hasn't been a better freshman in the nation that's been playing better than him at the the end of this season. Um, Robert Dillingham, definitely a very exciting young guard. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of Lou Williams, Jamal Crawford type player in him, just a microwave type mm-hmm. bucket getter. And then I think to round that out, I really like uh, Jacoby Walker. From mm-hmm. Baylor, six five, six six, really talented scoring guard that that really projects in the future could be a strong number one or number two. Based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like look, the Spurs are likely going to land somewhere in the top ten at the rate they're going somewhere. Um, but if this, if the we'll talk about trading down later, but we're, we're mm-hmm. talking about just sticking with the pick. Mm-hmm. They say they don't move it. They keep it. Whatever they land that top ten, are they going to get an an impact player or somebody who, yeah, may have to spend time in Austin? I think if we're drafting that high, we're going to get an impact player, and okay. really two to three come to mind that I I would like to get to pair with Wimby. Mm-hmm. That's a great, it's a great point. We're going to segue into that now. Now. You, you, we we know the Spurs lack point guards. Well, you know, no mm-hmm. knock on Trey Jones, but they need help in that department. Yeah. So, but, but, but before we do that, uh, get into like which of the guards would pair well with Wimby. There's a lot of I have. Well, let's put it this way: the buzz for Sar has kind of calmed down. I, mm-hmm. It was like a fever pitch. You know, it just feels like weeks ago. Now it's kind of gotten quiet. What's mm-hmm. with with Sar? You know, a lot of Spurs fans. Oh, another French big guy. Here we go again. Yay! But is he the real deal? Um, he's definitely got a lot of upside. It's mm-hmm. it's hard to tell with the bigs that he's uh, playing against right now if his game is really, really going to translate mm-hmm. over to the NBA. But, I mean, he is 7-1, super mm-hmm. athletic, definitely highly skilled. I mean, he can dribble the ball, pass it pretty well. He's got a smooth looking jump shot that projects to, you know, right. eventually being a pretty consistent shooter. So I think that while he SAR is going to be a fantastic NBA player, I think Wimby's true position in the NBA is just going to fall into 
I thought mm-hmm. it was going to be a four, a three or a four yeah. at first, but it's really looking like five is mm-hmm. what he's going to be. So not really a big he's he's definitely on my list if we can snag him if we don't you sure. know if he falls to us but he's not one or two yeah well i was thinking about you know that you know we'll get your answer in a bit but because the spurs could use some uh um, you know help below the rim with mm-hmm. wimby uh bassy got hurt you know I, i've always wondered like how would he be right now if he didn't get bu- he didn't get busted his knee up you know how yeah. would he look right now getting playing time behind wimby okay so he was gone Zach Collins hasn't had the best season at all. No. So if you're in the draft, it feels like this is a, a rare draft where you can actually pick on need. Is that am I stretching it too yeah. far? No, it's you, you can really draft like best available, pick on really pinpoint what your roster weaknesses are and, mm-hmm. and draft towards that. Because once again, there's no one that is like there's no Paolo. There's no Zion. There's mm-hmm. no Wimby. There's, yeah. you know, you go over the last several drafts. There's no Chet or even, you know, Jabari yeah. in this. There's, it's just, it's weak star power at the top, but could turn into be a really good draft with a bunch of guys that play a really long time and impact the game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a star Wimby pairing would be, it would be good. Would be good. Um, what about that other French guy? I have a hard time pronouncing his name. Richeche, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah. A, What's the deal with him? Richie. Yeah. He, What's the deal with him? Because he might be the Spurs, Peter one. Holt was there scouting him in France yeah. recently. He he might be number one on my big board. Him and him and Topic have been really neck and neck throughout the year. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, we haven't really able to been able to see Topic in a few months because he, he hurt his knee. But this is Zakari or Zachari, however you say his mm-hmm. name. He he is the real deal. I mean, six okay. nine, fluid player, shoots the ball at an extremely high rate already from three, is a willing defender, got strong basketball IQ, underrated passer. Yeah, uh, he's exactly what the NBA is looking for in the three four uh, position right now. Right. And uh, just to put the cherry on top, like you said, he is French. So obviously yeah. he and Wimby are already quite familiar with each other. So I think for me, uh, he's probably number one on my big board right now because he looks like a guy that could be a legit two or three option for a championship team. All right. So with the Spurs, like again, likely going to land somewhere in the top 10. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I believe – I mean, crossing fingers, they'll have two first round picks. That Toronto yeah. pick is kind of looking iffy right now. But let's just play the devil's advocate. They get one. Okay. Where mm-hmm. Toronto gets a top six. Okay. Sorry, Spurs. You know, bye bye. There goes your other pick. But what is, if you had to triage it, and because this is the rebuild with Wimby, so mm-hmm. the Spurs are looking to structure the roster around him. Who is the one or maybe two players you say, you know what, Spurs, if these two, one name or this two names are on the board, grab them because they'll pair well with Wimby moving forward. For me, it's uh, Rysatcher mm-hmm. and uh, Topic. I think okay. the way those two guys play, the way they understand the game of basketball and how it is played rather than just trying to get buckets, they really understand the game because they've both been playing pro for for so long at this point. Mm -hmm. And I just think their basketball IQ and potential trajectory as players Mm -hmm. would really make a formidable trio alongside Wimby. Those are my two guys for sure. Okay. I've been talking about this, you know, especially I mentioned this when we talked about earlier uh, on lockdown Spurs a couple of days ago about trading out and one of my uh, – we'll get to your trading down in a while, but one of my thoughts about trading out is because they're going to get younger, and this is already the youngest team in Pop's career. So you throw in an, another young player, does it prolong the rebuild? Because then you got to get that guy going again, you know? It, it, you know? That's been my biggest argument about just trading out. And no knock on Topic or whoever the guys could be, you know, but I just feel – this person need to bring in veterans. So use that pick, package it to get an established young vet. We're in the late twenties. You know, has been there, done that. Maybe a couple all stars uh, appearances, and bring him into San Antonio. What are your thoughts about just trading out completely? 
hey, if it's, you know, for the right guy, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, certainly. If we can, I think the most important need on the Spurs right now is an all-star level point guard. We mm -hmm. need an all-star handling the ball every time Wimby is basically mm -hmm. not bringing the ball at the court. So if we can trade out and go get, you know, Trey Young, which mm -hmm. I'm super, super hopeful for, mm -hmm. then a one thousand percent you go and do it because you know mm -hmm. Trey Young is already a bona fide top player in the NBA, leads the mm -hmm. league in assists, and uh, I think it really depends on the level of player you're gonna get. But I feel like we have so much draft assets right now that if the mo market you know, isn't as hot as what you thought it might be. And you're not getting offers with the level of player that you thought you might just draft it. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got, there's time, there's time to rebuild this team. It's, we don't need it to be, we've seen it. It's not going to be a one year thing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a two year thing. I mean, I yeah. expect, you know, some baby steps next year with, mm -hmm. you know, bring in some more guys, but this is probably in realistically a five year plan okay. to when we're really fighting mm -hmm. for that Western Conference Finals and championship. Mm -hmm. So if we can't get the guy this year, draft best player available, whoever you think is going to pair with Wimby, keep it mm -hmm. on that Thunder trajectory until we can go get ourselves a player like Shea to really mm -hmm. run the ship and you just keep right. chugging well, along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we hit the break, you mentioned uh, Topic as one of your two guys that you would want, to, you, you think that would fit best with Wimby in the rebuild. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any concerns about his injury? Is he injury prone? And what about the lack of defense? Um, I would say I don't really have any concerns on him being injury prone. I mm -hmm. haven't really read anything on that. Okay. So it's just one uh, of those things, you know, yeah, I think he's, goes through. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's just a young kid who's playing with men that just kind of got beat up a little yeah. bit running the point guard. But, um, Long term, I mean, I really think he fits well with this team. And you, you mm -hmm. say his lack of defense. Well, if, you know, the highest name on the Spurs priority list right now is <laughs> Trey Young. And he's yeah. certainly not known for his prolific. Yeah, defense. exactly. So I yeah. think with us having Wimby, he's the ultimate eraser, the ultimate, exactly. you mm -hmm. know. So it's I think you can get away with having someone who's a little more suspect on the defensive end mm -hmm. at point guard when you've got Wimby back there patrolling every other inch of the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is six six too. So yeah, he's got yeah. fantastic you, positional size. Yeah, yeah. You, you took the words I would say like he is a big dude. He's a big guard, you know? Yeah. But and I think what is he like 19 years old? I think he's yeah he's a 19, kid. 20? He's still yeah. a kid. Yeah. He's a kid. Um but you know again him getting that experience playing in professional league mm -hmm. overseas is going to do him well. Uh, I, I can see him perhaps making it pop is still around, uh, making pop pull his hair out more. He seems to be that oh, kind yeah. of like creative, yeah, you know, like, okay, super pop, creative. yeah. Okay. Pop, you called, I'm making this a four down for Wimby, but I'm going to do this and this and check this out. You know, it, mm -hmm. it reminds me of this of not comparing him to Manu, but remember how pops. Yeah. Like, hey, oh yeah. Manu drove me nuts until I realized, mm -hmm. you know what? Just be you. I could feel that happening with Topic. Yeah, I could I could certainly feel mm -hmm. that. He's a, a very creative player, especially his passing. He he throws some his vision is is really out of this world. He throws some crazy passes. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, you know, again, you know, the Spurs are positioned to become that international team again, you mm -hmm. know, with Wimby here, or you yeah. know, if they go with Topic or the Richie Shea. Still you know, got Jeremy. They got Jeremy there. So yeah, cool stuff. But do you think if if they go that route with either your picks, you know, Topic or Risha Shea, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, could that mean the end for maybe a guy like Blake Wesley, Trey Jones, you know, or Topic, Risha Shea, mm -hmm. uh, Keldon, maybe, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It looks I like mean, that could cause problems with the current roster. I mean, good problems with the Spurs, you know, bringing all yeah. this talent, but things are going to have to be changed. No, yeah, certainly. I mean, we've seen it this year this isn't the roster that we're going mm -hmm. forward with i mean yeah. they're at most is four guys that you can really say like you're you're definitely like here to stay and that 
mm-hmm. probably is pushing it. I think you're being generous. Yeah, I think you're probably being very only generous. like yeah. two, probably. Yeah, so probably. There's definitely going to come a time where some Spurs fans are going to get in their feels about, you know, losing mm-hmm. one of the few guys that have been here for a while. Yeah. But it's all it's all the process. It's you know every every team ever has been through this, mm-hmm. and it it just took the Spurs a lot longer to get to it than most teams. So Absolutely. we're not used to it, but Absolutely. it's coming. It's coming. it's coming. Yeah, I think it's coming as soon as this offseason. Yeah, I that, think one yeah. of our long-tenured Spurs will, will be gone this offseason. I'm, I'm right there with you. He is Jack Thompson. Follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. He is formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. When we get back, we're going to throw the big topic. Should the Spurs just trade down? We're going to get Jack's thought on that and more in just a few seconds right here on Locked on Spurs. Hey, I want to talk about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. So if you need super superchargers, they got that. Roof racks, they got that. LED headlights, check. Exhaust kits, yeah, they got that too, only at eBay Motors. So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need and the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Hey, I want to talk to you about Muslingers drive through Coffee, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Go there right now, San Antonio. If you're in the area or just want to go get yourself a caffeine fix, go to st- go to Muslingers drive through Coffee right now. It's located in the 281 to 1604 area, so no matter where you are in San Antonio, it's easily to get to. Great menu, mini donuts. Yeah, they're not just about drinks. You need a uh, caffeine pick me up like the Red Bull Infused Lightning Bolt series. They got it. Latte, they got it. Muscling your signature drink coffee, they got that too. Dairy alternatives, thumbs up, they got that as well. Friendly staff, again, that menu is expansive. It really is. You get lost there. If you show up there right now, which I know you will, you go there, you look at the menu, you'll be like, okay, where do I even begin? Yeah, it's so good there. They also have, um, when you're talking about those non-caffeinated drinks like the OG OJ, I recommend that one. Try putting some strawberry in it or just go wild. Make up your own drink. And I'm pretty sure they'll help you do that as well. So again, Muslingers drive through coffee. They're very interactive on social media, on TikTok, on uh, Facebook, on X, on threads. Just hit them up at Muslinger S-A-T-X. That is their handle. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. They're open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Got to go there if you're in San Antonio. Why? Because Mutt Slinger's drive through coffee is the best. And also, life is too short for bland coffee. And we're back right here on Lockdown Sports with Jack Thompson. Follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. He is formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. And I heard th- that you actually... Is it true, Jack, that you actually took out Tony Stark and you were the one that actually saved the world versus Thanos? Yeah, it was me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And you survived the snap, too. Well, the yep. oh, my God. How do you do it, Jack? How do you do it? I don't know. I amaze myself sometimes. <laughs> all right, Jack, we're talking all things about the upcoming NBA draft. And now we're going to get the big question Should the Spurs trade? down now uh earlier in lockdown spurs a uh, few uh, shows ago we talked about trading out now we're about trading down now, interesting though before we hit the record to for this segment jack was asking me like okay well how far are you going down so that tells me there's a there's probably a, a floor where you're like okay spurs don't pass this marker if you trade down what do you think about the spurs trading down acquiring more picks in the upcoming draft as an option, just as an option, you know, just I'm really not pro trading down. I okay. mean, we've got 
so many picks as it is. I feel like trading down, not really. It depends on if they're giving us, like, you know, if we're getting a player that can help mm -hmm. from the trade down, not just another pick, then I could be for that. But really, in, I'm not for trading down. I mean, yeah. we're in the lottery for a reason. I'd rather, you know, either trade that pick for another player or take that draft pick. Now, you did say, okay, fine, that if the Spurs do trade down, there could be some names that could they can find later in the first round mm -hmm. uh, still. But, uh, you know, quality players. Who are some guys that you'd be okay with if the Spurs were to trade down and still grab on the big board? Um. For me, players that I would be okay with drafting if we traded down, I think it would start with Dalton Connect. He's mm -hmm. a small forward, shooting guard from Tennessee, scoring the ball at an extremely high rate. Uh, he shoots the ball from three. Excellent. He's a mm -hmm. fantastic shooter. He's a big body. He's an older player, so he's like someone you'd expect to come in and immediately – you know, make an impact. Uh, I like him. Um, I like uh, Johnny Furphy from Kansas. 6'9", mm -hmm. Australian kid. Also got a good shot. He is a freshman, mm -hmm. so he might have a little bit of, you know, rawness to him. But he's got a little bit of uh, Gordon Hayward to his game. Okay. I like him. Uh, there's Ryan Dunn from Virginia, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, forward. This guy is raw offensively, but defensively, he's as good as you can find in the draft. He can guard. Right. I mean, in college, he's guarding one through five. He projects, you know, one through four in the NBA. Uh, he, I think he averages like two blocks, two steals a game. So I, I, I think that long term, if you really dedicate to improving mm -hmm. his offensive skills, Ryan Dunn could play in the league for a long time. Um, I like Tyler Kolkek. He's the point guard from Marquette. I mean, recently he's had like 15, 16 assist games. Right. He's a, the definition of a floor general. He's honestly, <clears throat> he honestly plays a lot like uh, Topic. Uh, not as big, but plays with a great place, a pace, and he's probably a better shooter. He's just okay. a smaller guard than Topic is. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's other guys, you know, that could project to be something – special but, but it, definitely, it definitely sounds to me like trading down would probably be your last option yeah and definitely coming back, right okay definitely. is it because this draft is is just not that you know big with talent like or, yeah, or media? I, yeah for me there's really only i mean there's probably like seven eight guys in the draft that i see that could have that all-star potential and, of course, mm -hmm. there's guys in the draft that are going to explode once they're in the NBA. They're going to get right, all yeah. the right, you know, training, all the right nutrition, all that kind of stuff. But the guys that I look at now with their skill level, their body, their body of work, uh, there's only about, like, seven or eight that I really feel right. will come in and make an immediate impact and translate further into their career. You know, there you have it. So Jack is saying, oh, maybe not trading down, uh, don't Spurs, trade down. especially in just this draft. But, all right. But he is Jack Thompson. Make sure to follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. What's new in your world, Jack? What's, what's been going on? Oh, man, I'm just getting ready for March, man. Can't just. Back too hard. Yeah. Try, just <laughs> getting ready for March, trying to get all the teams down, trying to get all the players down. And just, uh, you know, ready to watch basketball all day, every yeah. day. So you expect a lot of these players that are projected being the upcoming draft to either really have big leaps in the far as their um, stock? There are some. I mean, mm -hmm. the highest touted players aren't really going to be in March Madness. Mm -hmm. There's Cody Williams from uh, Colorado. He's one that I mm -hmm. do really like for the Spurs. He's the younger brother of Jalen Williams, who's the star oh, okay. of the Thunder. Yeah. I really like him. Uh, Jacoby Walker from Baylor definitely can mm -hmm. have a big, big march. The mm -hmm. boys from Kentucky, Dillingham, Reed Shepard, Justin Edwards, they could really bolster their stock. Uh, Steven Castle, Kyle Filipowski, those guys connect, like I said. But uh, most of the highest touted guys are, you know, there's Ron Holland and Matas Bazelis from G League mm -hmm. Ignite. 
there's you know Sar and Topic and yeah. Bryce Shesher. So mm -hmm. uh, really, the the probably like five or six of the top ten are all not going to be in March Madness. So yeah. it's going to be important for a lot of these guys who have been you know kind of flying under the radar that they could mm -hmm. really you know skyrocket their name closer up to the lottery or maybe even in the late or late lottery. Absolutely, and that's why you got to follow Jack on X at Jack mm -hmm. underscore Thompson thirty three. For all things March Madness, college hoops, NBA draft, the list goes on and on. Make sure you do that right now. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Sports your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Check out Lockdown Sports today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. National, local, regional host, we're all there 24-7 Lockdown Sports today. Go subscribe to it right now. We're going to have a very special guest tomorrow, so I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag yet, everybody. Just got to tune in tomorrow. Yes, and it will be Spurs related. Sometimes Jack got to let people know it's not going to be like <laughs> some artist from one of these people. <laughs> it's, not gonna be, billions of it's not going to be Mike Jimenez. Mike Kimo. Well, he's he's, he's yeah, I know he's later in the week. Yeah, he's later in the week, but it ain't Mike. All right, that ain't the special guest. Mike will come on later this week. But yeah, but I'm really excited for tomorrow's show. So check it out. And again, follow Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Google Play, Ken's Five Plus app iTunes, Spotify, the list goes on and on. So for Jack, Iron Man, Thompson, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdowns. Perfect.